Hello, everyone, and thank you for attend attending today's session, Omni Channel Support, How to Create a Seamless Customer Experience in Manufacturing, Transportation, and Logistics. Just some background on ABSG. We have 25 plus years of experience with more than 500 clients. We are a Zendesk partner, and we really like to focus on CRM, the customer experience, financial software, marketing automation, and custom solutions. We work with our customers to find the software that they have always wanted. Some background on me. I am your speaker for today. I am Jennifer Carpus from Maine, and I am Director of Marketing Services and Industry Outreach at Bay. And I love working with manufacturing and transportation and really figuring out what type of resources we can provide to the industries to help them out and what type of software they're utilizing and how we can help them um, best use them. What to expect from today's session? Well, we're going to define the differences in multi-channel and omni-channel support. We're also going to understand how to communicate to different types of prospects and customers, learn some knowledge transfers, best practices, and then we'll end with a Q&A. So let's get started. Multi-channel versus omni-channel support. So both of these means that you're able to interact with your customers and your prospects on multiple channels, but it's the way that you go about it that's a little bit different. With multi-channel support, you're still interacting in all these different ways, but every channel is separate. Whereas with omni-channel support, you're creating a customer, uh, a seamless customer experience because you're creating a consistent experience because you're interconnecting all of those communications. So if somebody emails one sales rep one day and then follows up with another one on live chat the next day, those conversations would be connected. And if we think about all of the different channels that we are communicating with our customers and our prospects with, thinking about connecting all of the dots and all of these conversations, that can be challenging. But we're going to talk about how you can do it. So ways that we're communicating currently with our customers is by phone, email, live chat, online portal, Skype, Slack, Facebook Messenger, and always still opportunities for in-person communication. But why do we need to have all of these multiple channels? Why can't we just talk to people on the phone or in person or even through email? Well, 93% of buyers begin their buying process with an internet search. And 86% of buyers are willing to pay more for a great customer experience. And I like to think of customer experience as the experience your customers are having, whereas customer service is what we're doing to service them. The experience is how they feel about what you're doing. It's not just what you're providing. And if we think about it in terms of our business and our transportation or our manufacturing business, this is just a quick flow chart of the process of getting a new part. So a customer needs more parts, so they make a purchase order. There's a lot of steps between that purchase order and the invoice. How connected are the communications that your company has within those different departments? So a sales rep could be in charge of the purchase order, but if that same sales rep was called while that part was, say, in the quality check or being run on the machine, would they have answers to what part of production that was in? How much insight do they have into that customer's product journey once it's out of their hands? And if we think about then going into the shipping process, so this matters whether we're a trucking company working with the manufacturer to transport the parts to a warehouse or directly to the customer or both. How are we updating the status of their order to our manufacturer so that they can though then go and tell their customers as well? So this is why omni-channel support is so important and keeping all the silos broken down with communication so everyone can be updated on what's going on with their order. Why is this all important and why 
is there a disconnect going on currently in the market? This statistic for Bain & Company says that 80% of CEOs believe they deliver a superior customer experience, but only 8% of their customers agree. And that's a pretty staggering statistic. And we think about how this could be. Say you have the best phone support in your industry. You are known for it. But if your customers want to reach you through a live chat or through Facebook Messenger and you're not even there, then are you giving them the customer experience that they want? Because customer service should not just be about one department. It should be the entire company. It's not just sales or customer service teams that are even forward facing to your customer. They're also talking to accounting and billing often. But anyone at your company that has a touch point into a product or service that is going on with your customer has an effect on the customer experience. For instance, if someone in the warehouse scans their own barcode and puts strawberries on the crate truck and those strawberries get transported to your customer, then that is a problem in the customer experience. They're not getting the products that they need, so that affects their experience, even though that warehouse employee never had any face time with that customer. In case you're still not convinced that this is so important to our businesses, 64% of consumers expect companies to respond and interact with them in real time and 71% of consumers say that customer service provided 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year has influence on loyalty. So it's not just about price, it is about that experience. And better customer service all of the time in real time equals loyalty. I think that all conversation in business and how we communicate with each other in the business world kind of stems for how we talk to each other in our personal lives. And in our personal lives right now, we are in constant communication with our friends, family, and business contacts on multiple platforms every day. As I was thinking about that, I looked into my own personal life and as I was putting together this presentation, in a 24 hour period, I realized that I had talked to my same friend in six different ways in a one day period. We talked on Snapchat, we talked on Facebook Messenger, we talked on Instagram, and then we also had some more meaningful conversations through email and on Skype and through our SMS text messaging. So as we have these experiences in our personal life, we're then wanting to have them in our business life as well. We can all aim to never have any issues, but they happen. There might be a weather delay for a shipment, or we can have a machine that breaks down in our plant, and we can't have production restarted for a day or two. That's going to greatly affect the customer experience, but what they'll remember is the feeling that they had in the discussion and the resolution of that issue. Because people will forget what you said and they will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. This quote by Maya Angelou is one I personally take with me professionally and in business because it's so true. There's always going to be some type of problem that may arise, but it's how we handle those issues that matter. So if we did have a weather delay for a shipment, how did that customer find out about that weather delay? Did they have to log into their system and track their order and find that there was a delay? Or did we call them directly, tell them about the issue, what happened, what we're doing to correct this issue, and some proactive strategies that we're taking to make sure that doesn't happen again? Those experiences are vastly different then in the moment that it comes that they wanna add more shipments or need to change providers, or if they need another new part for a manufacturer and they're gonna to go to a different one, they can remember that feeling and how well you took care of them. And that's what's going to help them make those decisions in the future. So how do we manage all of this, all of these conversations, all of these different pieces? So on a personal level, we all store the data in our brains, which for me isn't always reliable. 
But what happens when those conversations go across multiple platforms involving various people in different departments? This is the challenge that we have as businesses to try to really achieve omni-channel support. But that is where CRM comes in and it gives you a 360 degree view of your customer. It creates a centralized location for all of your information and it makes it really easy to take up-to-date notes for your sales and customer support teams and you can integrate software systems as needed. So if you did have a customer that called a sales rep asking information about an invoice, some people get a little nervous about that. They don't want the sales rep to have full visibility into the invoicing. They might be afraid that if they're in a system they're not familiar with, that they'll be inputting information that's incorrect. But if you integrate the software, it's not giving other departments access to change information. It's just giving them visibility if that's what you want. So if you can see that in the CRM, which is where your sales working out of, they can pull up the invoice, take a look at it, answer any quick questions. And then if it is more complicated, send them to billing that needs to then answer those more complex situations. How can this help customer experience? Well, it can do a lot. It can help us manage the RFP response process, but it also can help us see shipment analytics. So if we're connecting, if we're a tracking company and we're connecting our CRM and our TMS, we have better visuals into our shipments. If we're a manufacturer and we're integrating our CRM and our ERP systems, we can have better tracking of our order management or of our vendors and our suppliers and have those all managed within the system to get a full visual of everything that's going on in our business. Your CRM can also help you be, have a more better customer loyalty. Say you have a monthly or quarterly check-in and you set your reminders for yourself right inside the system. You hook in your calendar and your appointments. It's really easy for all members of your team. This is also really great for knowledge transfer. Inside the CRM, you can have detailed notes that explain personal things about a company or about the person at the company. Say your regular contact at a manufacturer just had a baby. You could have that in the record. So anyone that's talking to them can congratulate them but maybe you don't want to be that personal with your customer. This can also work on a business perspective. We can have in there, okay, this person in this, at this company always has staff meetings all day on Monday. So if you call them <clears throat> to follow up about an order, they get irritated because they're busy or they normally place their orders later on in the week. We can also think about seasonal businesses. Maybe we have someone that ships wildflowers and they only do that in the summer. We can then be tracking, we need to call them in May to figure out what their shipment's gonna be and try to forecast what they need from us. This experience and knowledge transfer shows the, com the company that we know them and their needs and their use case. And it's not just one person at our company that knows that. And that's huge for the customer experience. And it's also great internally because then if you have that person who has all that knowledge, either retire or leave the company for some other reason, you still have that information on your customer. So how can really this all come together? Here's an example, Zenda Sunshine. It's an open and flexible CRM platform and it connects all of the pieces for you. So whether you are using all of the different features that Zendesk has, or you want to link in social media accounts or other custom apps or third-party applications, Sunshine powers all of Zendesk's products and you, you can also use it to power any custom applications or services that you put in with Zendesk as well. Since we're talking about manufacturing and logistics, I did want to quickly show you Sunshine for products and orders. You can extend the standard data model to get a complete view of the customer experience as well.
omnichannel in logistics extends a little bit past just communicating and creating those um, different ways to talk to our customer. The retail landscape evolution is creating this always open shopping experience. And the result of that is that shippers and logistics partners need to keep up the pace with that. I was looking at the 2019, the 23rd annual third party logistics study. And you can see that some categories of shipment wasn't even factored in in 2015 and is now taking over a lot of the business in 2019. For instance, order online, deliver to home. That wasn't even a cross-channel fulfillment that companies were thinking about, but now 60% of shippers say that's part of their business and 56% of 3PLs agree. We can also take a look at the different types of software that they are investing in or thinking about investing in. And one of the greatest things about CRM is that you can integrate the software. So say you really want to have a better TMS system or a better ERP system, you can do that and then connecting it, getting that full view of the customer is gonna benefit everybody. For omni-channel and manufacturing, it's a lot about product availability, supplier management. People want to have a personalized experience and be able to track what's going on with their order, their shipments, everything involved in the process. So we can kind of think about manufacturing as the indirect retail channel and omnichannel support in manufacturing is all about bringing together your suppliers and your vendors under a consolidated ecosystem to really create a really smooth supplier vendor relationship. So if we are thinking about how we want to communicate with our customers, understand our prospects, how do we know where they are? Omnichannel support isn't about being in every single place, but it's about being in the places where our prospects are, our customers are, and communicating in the way that they want to communicate with us. So the first step to do that is to simply ask them. I think too often we just think about how we like to communicate best and that's how we then communicate to our audience. But it's important to take that step back and ask because it's going to be different for every person. And say, you know, someone is a sales rep. So you assume that they like email because they are always go, go, go. So you think they have a better chance of reading email but maybe this particular sales rep is in their car lot, so they would actually prefer if you give them a call. You can also store the information of what their preferred method of communication is inside your CRM so that everybody can see that. This is also great for when, if a problem does arise, you know how to communicate with them to get the quickest response for them. There are some demographic information that we can gauge how people may like to communicate, but this is just a reference. It's not to say that every single person in this generation is going to have this preference. For instance, I love to use this example. This is my mama emoji. This is my mother. She is a baby boomer, but she loves text messaging. She hates talking on the phone. And even in text messaging, she pretty much exclusively responds back in emojis because she says they're so expressive. So you just never know what you're going to get and you don't want to make an assumption that you know how someone wants to communicate. So with all of that factors in mind and thinking about all the different ways that we can communicate with our audience, there's also ways to use the platforms most successfully. For instance, email is great for having a paper trail so everyone can look through quickly and see what's going on and for quick hit non-critical information, but it can um, have a lack of response time because people can respond to it at their leisure. And it lacks emotional cues. So you might think someone's really upset about something, but they're not, or vice versa. Whereas on the phone, you can handle urgent issues and you can hear emotion in somebody's voice when they're talking to you. And there's no time gaps. They can call and get an answer. With that said, 
if you have some type of call center and a customer has to wait on the phone to talk to a customer service representative, that could have some negative ways to use the platform if they do have issues that they need to talk to and they're on the phone waiting for a really long time. And you do have to rely on proper documentation to carry that conversation from one conversation to the next. But that is why something like a CRM is great. You can have one click calling inside the system, have the note pop up when the conversation is over, type in what you talked about and it can go right into the system live chat and SMS text messaging. You can get quick responses. You can also put in some automated options. So if someone is just looking for your FAQs or for um, a tariff schedule, maybe that's something that you can have automated so they can ask you for it and the documentation comes back to them. But it can also be challenging to navigate complexity. So if someone has a lot of things to talk about, it's a little bit confusing, that can be hard to navigate through, which is gonna be one of the negatives for Facebook Messenger as well. And it can also lack a personal touch, but it is great for prospect communication. If somebody might find, come across your Facebook page and talk to you through there, um, it can be fast and efficient and have a chatbot option. So it could lack a personal touch, but depending on how you're guiding those conversations, give some quick hit information for people just looking for some quick answers. Slack is one of my personal favorites because it can integrate with other platforms pretty easily and it has voice, video, and text options. So if you, it's set up for team collaboration internally, but you can use it for your customers and it is a direct line to the customer. So they can um, reach out to you, say you are having a text conversation, you can then switch that over to a phone call or video right within the platform but not everyone is using it so if they're not familiar with it that might be take some troubleshooting some positives about an online portal is that it can be used as an informational resource and have some self-service support options so if they are just trying to pull some more information about your company your schedules or your pricing or your capabilities this would be a great place for that um, maybe they're not ready to talk to you just yet, but they want to have that information. The negative is that could then lack that personal touch because they are getting the information themselves and it's on you to regularly update that space. So if you have schedules that are changing and pricing that are changing, you need to go in and put those in. So that sums up the presentation about omnichannel in logistics and manufacturing. Um, now we are going to open up for questions. I see that we have one question. If I want to have a better customer experience overall, where should I begin beyond just connecting these omnichannel support, beyond these options? So I would first ask yourself, what is the experience you're trying to deliver? And then determine also what your customers really want. Sometimes we have to take a step back and assess what we're doing and what's going on to be able to move forward. So what are you hoping to achieve? And then look to where your prospects are talking and communicating. Well, thank you all so much for attending. Here is my contact information on the screen. So if you think of any questions later on, feel free to reach out. I appreciate your time. Thank you.